You found the WMIX Saturday Sports Show on AM 940 and WMIXSports.com. Cared for by Crossroads Community Hospital. The Saturday Sports Show has been recognized by the Illinois Broadcasters Association as one of the top radio programs in the state. That means the very best mix of local sports content is right here. From the powerhouse on Broadway, the Saturday Sports Show starts now. And we welcome you into the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX and WMIXSports.com. It's a beautiful Saturday morning here in the King City. Of course, it was a great night of high school football last night. We'll talk about all of that and more here today. The Saturday Sports Show is powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. That's Danny Zerwinski. I'm Chris Hugo. Jeff Crow is with us in studio as well here from the Powerhouse at 3501. Pretty good lineup coming your way today. Of course, we'll talk with Malvern and Rams head football coach Jared Shaner. We'll talk with Johnny Hollis, of course, of the Cestrovalier Waltonville Woodlawn Red Devils. WMIX sports correspondents Todd Rushing and John Shadowns will stop by. We'll talk with Todd Thomas of the Pinckneyville Panthers. They got a big win last night, spoiling Nashville's homecoming. Josh McCurran, of course, of the CZR Bearcats. We'll talk with him about their big win over the McLeansboro Foxes yesterday. And then Sam Root will stop by. He is the athletic director at Weber Township High School, also head baseball coach. They're having a big fish fry fundraiser today. Of course, we'll tell you how you can help support the Weber Trojans. We'll talk about all of that and more coming up on today's program. We hope you'll stay tuned until 10 o'clock. That's how long we're here till, of course, uh, working on getting last night's Mount Vernon Ranch football game uploaded to WMIXSports.com. It'll be audio only, of course. We're not going to upload video until the season is complete. You'll find all of that. You'll find last night's full scoreboard at WMIXSports.com as well as we'll work at getting that to you over the course of the next few moments here on the Saturday Sports Show. But it was quite an interesting night in high school football last night. Uh, you take a look at the Mount Vernon game for one. Altoff Carbondale was a close one, but we'll talk about all of these in our scoreboard when it comes. But uh, taking a look at last night's action, though, I, I, before we give any scores, I don't really think there were too many surprises. Pinckneyville winning on the road at Nashville. Surprised me the way those two teams went in last night. I think Carbondale, as close as they were to Altoff by four points, that was a big shock. I think Marion was picked to win over Centre. I don't think by 43 many people were uh, thinking along that route. Other than that, the rest of the evening pretty went pretty well went kind of like we thought as far as games and scores. And, and really, when you looked at the schedule, no disrespect, but there wasn't a lot of marquee games last night. And like we discussed, the three marquee games. Might be where Mount, Ver- Mount Vernon Cahokia was, and as far as uh, Altoff Carbondale. Of course, a, a little bit of conjecture here before we get to the WMIXSports.com scoreboard, but taking a look at those now, I mean, we're, we're going to talk about some of those lack of surprises. Well, in, in the Mount Vernon side of the schedule, the non conference, Rochester beat Springfield Southeast 49 22. Civic upset Mascuta 27 21. Jerseyville beat Triad on the road 70 34. And Mount Carmel beat Vincennes, Indiana, 27-14. In the South 7 last night, it was Altoff over Carbondale, 48-44. Marion, as we said, beat Centralia, 50-7, as the Wildcats continue to improve as the season goes on from that overtime win here in Mount Vernon. In the River to River last night, Ohio Division, Benton holds on to beat Massac County 25-22. They led by a score of 19-7 at one point and had to have a couple of field goals at the end to stave off the Patriots at home. Harrisburg beat Murfreesboro 27-20. It was Heron over West Frankfort 63-19, and Heron and Harrisburg will play next week for the River to River Ohio Division title, or Heron can win it outright. In the Mississippi Division last night, Duke Hoyne, their playoff hopes are done. They lost their fifth game last night on the road to Pitt and A.J. 36-15. Carterville, as expected, drubbed Sparta Steelville, 52-16. And Pinckneyville won the over game, 53-46 on the road at Nashville. In the Black Diamond last night, it was Hamilton County losing again to CZR, 47-14 at home. Chester won over El Dorado Trico at home, double nickel to zero. And Fairfield beat SVWW, ending the Red Devils' hopes of the playoffs this year, 28-6. to This afternoon, it'll be Carmi at El Dorado Trico and, of course, El Dorado at Johnston City as the Black Diamond finish up their schedule for the weekend. 
Of course, the Rams did get some playoff points help, not from necessarily Mascuda, but they got five more, which takes them to 37 playoff points. So you figure God just got to get to that fifth win, of course. Disappointing loss last night. We'll talk with Jared Shainer about that here on the Saturday Sports. We're coming up in just a moment. But Rams are at Centralia next week. And, of course, we remind you, uh, no video in that one. Of course, a video blackout at CHS, no problem with that. We'll have audio only on WMIXSports.com. Just want to make you aware next week. 6.30 will be your pregame. 7 o'clock will be your kickoff on WMIX and WMIXSports.com. Of course, audio only. That's all coming up next week. Of course, we'll have Lady Rams Volleyball coming your way on Tuesday as they travel to Marion. We will have video there at WMIXSports.com and of course, the Lady Rams and the Lady Wildcats on Tuesday night. So we look forward to bringing you a nice week of coverage of high school sports. We'll always have score updates, scoreboards, I should say, at the end of every night when there's local action at WMIXSports.com. We're also working on last night's video highlights. There were a couple of really big runs there for the Rams, though it was a loss on the road last night. We'll talk with Mount Vernon Rams head football coach Jared Shader. We need to sneak in a quick break here on the Saturday Sports Show. It's powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. Mount Vernon is home to many wonderful people and things, and that includes quality cardiac care from Dr. Ruzek Ibrahim. A skilled cardiologist, Dr. Ibrahim's training and scientific accomplishments have earned his designation as a Fellow of the American College of Cardiology. His services range from preventative care to the treatment of advanced heart conditions. For an appointment with Dr. Ibrahim at Crossroads Specialty Clinic, call 241-9071 or visit in person at 4113 South Water Tower, Mount Vernon. More Americans are on a move today than ever before. One of the most popular modes of transportation is the motorcycle. Motorcycles take us to our jobs, school, to the beach, and all around the country. If you're a bike rider, your Pekin Insurance Agency, Page Insurance on Crown View in Mount Vernon, wants to make sure you have the best insurance protection while you're riding. Ask about the money-saving auto cycle discount and the experienced driver discount, too. Call Page Insurance at 242-7000 today about motorcycle insurance from Pekin Insurance. Here's Jeff Schmidt for Schmidt Chevrolet of Mount Vernon. We've got the all-new 2014 Chevy Silverado in, and it is a remarkable truck. We're very, very excited about it. A completely new truck with an option of a six and a half foot bed on the crew cab, which is a feature that a lot of our customers really like. The ride and the handling of this truck is just second to none. It's the most fuel-efficient V8 on the market. Schmidt Chevrolet of Mount Vernon, 3423 Broadway in Mount Vernon. And we welcome you back on the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX and WMIXSports.com. Glad to have you with us. Trying to catch up with the Malvern Rams head football coach, Jared Shainer. Tough loss last night, of course, to Cahokia. I believe the final, of course, was 45-33. to I only remember, or 45-32, of course. So I know it's a disappointing loss for the Rams on the road last night. Going to have a big game, though, coming up on Friday again. With the Centralia Orphans as we are working to get Jared Shainer, head coach of Malvern Rams football. We're about a minute early, so probably not expecting us just yet, but we welcome Jared Shainer to the program. Coach, good morning. Hey, my apologies. My phone is on vibrate. <laughs> That's all right. We called We called it a little early. It's okay. But um, I know last night, obviously, I mean, I would be a fool to think that not disappointed with, with last night's end result, but I think we, we learned a little bit more about our conference last night in that Cahokia, though their non-conference record was 0-3 coming in, now sit at the top of the South 7 with a 3-1 and record. We learned a lot about Cahokia and that they're pretty good. They, they really are. Um, yeah, they're 3-1 and in conference and, you know, lost to Carbondale by 7. Um, and could could probably very easily be 4-0 in conference. So uh, if they win next week, uh, they win it. So, um, yeah, not not happy with the outcome and and uh, disappointed with, you know, some of our uh, play along the way. But uh, we did lose to a pretty good football team. Um, they've got a chance to win their last couple and, and be a playoff team as well. So The beginning of the game last night, notice from where we were at in our position, did you feel like, both teams had a very difficult time getting into the contest or at least getting into a rhythm early in that ball game? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, it, it's a tough place to play. It's unique. Um, you know, we, we the locker room that you use is quite a ways away from the field, and it's really not an option to go back in there. Um, so we waited a little bit longer than we usually do to come out. 
um, knowing that we were just going to stay out there the whole time. Um, and, and, you know, we've been pretty spoiled, and we are spoiled with, you know, a great fan support that we have and um, just our atmosphere at home games. You know, we've had two home games in a row, and to, to go from, you know, 1,000 or 1,500 people at the game or 2,000, and, and last night uh, I'm sure our fans outnumbered theirs. It was just a, a different atmosphere, and, uh, you know, not to make an excuse, but it was. It was tough to get going, and, and you could tell it with our kids before the game. Uh, there just wasn't a lot of, a lot of energy. Last night, your team got down early. Battleback took the lead. Did at any point last night, uh, early on, did you feel like the ship had been righted at that point, the way things were moving along? Um, you know what? I did for a little bit. I did. I, I felt like our defense settled down a little bit. We made a punt a couple times there in the second quarter, I think it was. Um, you know, offensively, uh, we just talked about the fact that I, I didn't feel like they really lined up and stopped us a whole lot. Um, we had a couple penalties. Um, and they killed drives and and they did they made a few nice plays uh, against us up offensively in the second quarter, but uh, I I felt like we were headed in the right direction and even at halftime we just talked about hey we've been here before we were down two um, we left some points on the board and um, you know but uh, but we get the ball in the second half let's go out and put a drive together and and uh, you know it just didn't work out that way for us. Well, and of course, you just kind of take a look at the whole gamut of last night's game, and, and from the from the rhythm aspect, from from the end result, it just seemed like something that we had talked about prior to the game was having to stop the Cahokia big plays, and and it just seems like sometimes that can be quite the impossible task when they have so many guys that they can run out there with such breakaway speed, and they pretty pretty well put that on display last night. <laughs> they sure did. Um, they've got, you know, two or three of those guys are track guys that are on, you know, state championship track team and, um, you know, relay teams. And uh, they they have just some, we talked about it as coaches afterwards. I, you know, I didn't feel like uh, it was tremendous athleticism necessarily. Um, they, weren't, they weren't making you miss because they were shifty or anything like that. They were just simply running by you. Um, and credit their kids, they... You know, they, they have a lot of speed, and, and they were using it. Um, their kids ran hard last night, um, and I think as the game went on, obviously they got more and more confidence and, and continued to run hard and uh, ran through some arm tackles and some poor tackling by our guys. Um, and we've talked about it before. I just I kept saying on the sideline, we need, we need that momentum change play, um, and we just couldn't get it last night. Nothing, uh, nothing really just sparked us to where, um, you know, I felt like we could – we could take momentum and go with it. Last night, of course, it's that time of year. We talked about it on the air. You get to week seven, eight, and nine. There's a lot of injuries. There's some bumps. There's some bruises. Guys are starting to get up a little bit, beat up a little bit more physically and possibly mentally. You were missing some key players last night, obviously. Did you feel like your team had a little more difficult time adjusting to some of the players being out as that game went along? I think so. I think. Um... I think it was disappointing uh, losing Drew Hester for the season, and and uh, you know we obviously we didn't have it at all last week to practice, so um, it's not an excuse. We had guys in positions and got lots of reps to practice, but um, you know Braden a couple weeks ago, and then Drew last week um, to have you know those guys out, and then another another thing that uh, was just uh, a, I guess a difficulty for us is Jacob Williamson is our leading tackler on the year. He's our middle linebacker. Um, he missed school all week long. He had the flu. Uh, just could not keep anything down. Very sick. And uh, finally got himself here on um, part of the day Thursday and Friday. Um, you know, and, and we had moved him to outside linebacker. And, and uh, he, he played his tail off last night, but just wasn't, definitely wasn't anywhere near 100%. Um, you know, so we, on the defensive side of the ball, we were, you know, kind of without three of our main starters, um, our two leading tacklers and Jacob and Drew, or at least, like I said, Jacob was out of position and, and not 100%, and then Braden being out of corner, so you just limit your depth a little bit, and then you're right, just a couple other guys have um, you know, nothing too serious, but just little things that when you get down, um, it's, it's hard to be mentally tough, um, and you get down and you start thinking about your, your ankle hurting or your your left hand or your your toes or whatever it is, 
Um, but a lot of times with with winning and with big plays and with excitement, you don't feel those things. And last night, of course, your team battled back late, down a couple of scores, did battle back for late score, didn't get the onside kick, and Koki ran the clock out. Attention turns now to Centralia, a team that was beaten handily by Marion. At this point in week eight, in the last couple of years you've been in this rivalry, is this a case of expecting the unexpected when playing the Orphans? Well, I think so, and I think, uh, um, you know, just in my couple of years that I've been here, I, you know, they, they've struggled the last few weeks, but... Um, you know, it's a whole different, I guess it's a whole different animal when it's Mount Vernon, Centralia. Um, I think, obviously, their kids are going to step up um, a level this week, uh, being that they're playing us, and I, I think that our kids will be the same and respond. And um, So, yeah, we have to turn our, our attention and focus to them, and, uh, you know, we're both sitting in the same boat. We're 4-3 and three right now. Um, nobody wants to, to wait till week 9 to try to get their fifth win of the season, so... I, I expect uh, just a great football game and a battle. Well, and of course, the Orphans, as we know, <clears throat> have been banged up as well, of course, coming in on Friday night. That'll be a big road game for the Rams, of course, to close out the conference schedule. Outside of the obvious, we know they're young. We know that they're a little banged up at running back. What else do we know about Central Orphan football? Well, uh, you know, Coach Calling does a great job, obviously, what he's done the last few years there. Is, um, you know, just a pretty amazing turnaround, really. Um, you know, they're a spread team. They uh, Early on in the year, they were pretty balanced uh, with the Scott kid at running back. And um, I'm, I, the way I've taken it, I think he's out. Uh, I think Ray said at least till, the, till week nine, um, if not the playoffs. Um, and when they lost him, they really, I think they've plugged in a few kids there, but just haven't had a lot of success. So they've become much more one-dimensional. I think I read some stats this morning. They had negative five yards rushing last night and against Marion and uh, threw the ball right around 40 times. So um, anytime you become that one-dimensional, obviously that, that hurts you. Um, but they're going to be well-coached. And like I said, I know their kids will be ready to play. It's a, you know, a rivalry game. The kids know each other. Um, they've been competing in sports for, for years against each other. So, um, again, I, I, it'll be a good game. And, of course, I know the bus ride back probably wasn't the greatest last night from the crew from Mount Vernon, but you have a big rivalry game coming up. It is on the road. Is this a case where the kids are already looking to next week, looking to Friday night, or is it going to take a, a bit of time to get them pet back up? I think uh, we, we took the morning off so coaches could watch a little film, and, um, and we have a long weekend at school, uh, Columbus Day on Monday, so they'll come in Monday night. I think we'll, we'll spend a little bit of time on this film, and, we made enough mistakes where we've got to get them corrected and, and do some things differently. But um, I think the kids are going to be ready. Like I said, I have no doubt that, uh, you know, by by this afternoon, uh, it still hurts the next morning and, and you think about it. But I think that throughout the weekend, the kids and, and the coaching staff will, will move our attention to Centralia. And uh, to, obviously, I don't have to state the importance of the game for us. It's a, it's a rivalry. It's conference. And uh, win five is on the line. Is this a case where you can kind of relate to the kids? Hey, you know, after in 2011 where we struggled, we 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 had a Centralia team that was had it on a, on the run of a phenomenal season. We we played pretty close, had a very good chance to win that one last year. We we remember last year Centralia finishes nine and zero, but in that game the Rams had had them up, you know, all throughout the game. Is this a case where you can kind of relay that to them, saying, hey, we almost beat them the last two years. There's no reason we can't go out there and get a big win here in Week Eight of 2013. Oh, absolutely. Um, you're exactly right. They've been, I believe, they've been eight and zero each of each of the years that, excuse me, seven and zero each of the years that uh, we've played them. Um, two years ago at their place, we had a game that came down to late in the fourth, and I, I remember the exact score: fifty-six to fifty-two or fifty-six to forty-nine. Um, it was a shootout, and and uh, gave them gave them a good run, and then last year at home, uh, you know, we came out and got the lead early, and um, really really ran the ball really well against them, and and had a lead throughout the game until a little bit later in the second half, and and they scored a couple and got up on us. But yeah, I definitely think that's the case, and we'll talk about that, and and I think the kids know that, uh, you know, just from underclass football in the last couple of years, I think there's no doubt that we can go compete with them and. And hopefully we can do what the last couple of teams have done is, you know, try to make them as one-dimensional as possible. And then, uh, you know, like I said, if you 
you know, a team's going to line up and they don't have, uh, you know, a running game or a passing game, vice versa, um, and really make them one-dimensional, you can do some things to hopefully take that away. Our final question to you, of course, you know what it is. It's our WMIX Sports social media question of the week. I don't know if it's the mood we're all kind of in this morning or what the case may be, but our question this week is, what is your biggest pet peeve? That's a good question. Um, I think just in general terms, um, probably probably laziness. I, I just don't have... Uh, it just it just really bothers me whether whether that be from a you know a coaching standpoint or a teaching standpoint having a kid in class or or just from my family standpoint. Um, I just think uh, I'm getting too philosophical and too deep <laughs> on a Saturday morning. I think uh, you know we're we're all pretty blessed in one way or the other, and and it just upsets me when people don't use their talents that they were given and uh, and choose to to be lazy. Amen to that. That is, that is solid and one that I can definitely agree with here on a Saturday morning. I can agree with that 24-7. Uh, Coach, big game on Friday night for the Rams. Could become playoff eligible with a win over the Centralia Orphans. Good luck to the Rams. We'll see you on Friday night. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Always a pleasure. That's Jared Shaner, head coach of Mount Vernon Rams football, 4-3 and three on the year, 2-2 two and two in the South Southern Conference. But um, basically up to 37 playoff points unofficially at this point uh, with a win. Next week would become playoff eligible, and the case with that would be you're going to get two playoff points regardless coming out of the South 7 Conference. You don't want three playoff points next week, trust me. You just want the two because that means you've gotten beat if you get the three. But two would take you up to 39. That's where many believe that the playoff point cut will be. So I don't think it's ever been 40. Maybe one time I think maybe it was 40, but I don't think it's ever been 40. 40 once, not very often. It was recent. Maybe like two or three years ago? Yeah, there was a lot more. Another thing to remember, too. It's been three years at least. Is that, you know, you, you have to win one more. If Mount Vernon win, one, wins one more, they're in the playoffs because they got enough points. They're going to have enough points with teams they play. Two, uh, 14 of the 16 teams in 6A last year had bigger enrollments than Mount Vernon. Both were private schools that were not. So if you're starting to look that far down the road as far as wins and what class – Mount Vernon's shot of being in 6A is probably pretty good, but 5A is looking uh, maybe not as good, but looks good as well. It's it's a toss-up. But none of that means anything unless Mount Vernon can win one of the next two. Exactly, and we'll keep you informed as long as once they get that fifth win on uh, exactly where they could end up. That's what we like to do. That's what we like to plan. So there we go. That's one of our strengths. We hope you'll follow our strengths on the Twitterverse at WMIX Sports. We're on Facebook as well. We still need to talk to Johnny Hollis, of course, of the Red Devils, Chester Valier, Waltonville, Woodlawn. They went to the train yard last night in Fairfield. It was a tough loss, but Fairfield's a tough team this year. We'll talk about Red Devil football on the break here on the Saturday, after the break on the Saturday Sports Show, powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. Your spine is a miracle of engineering. So when pain strikes, your body is telling you to get help fast. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois is proud to feature their spine care team. Doctors Kowalski and Smith, the professionals at Orthopedic Center, specialize in back and neck pain. So put our spine care team on the job. Find out more online at orthocenter-si.com. Stop the pain, fix the problem, and enjoy life again. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois. Hi, this is Joe David Cummins, president of Community First Bank. Now is a great time to move your account to Community First Bank. With our new one account offering the highest interest rate in the market, free checking, and CD specials delivered by people you know and trust, why would you not bank with the market leader in Jefferson County? We offer five locations with seven ATMs and have been serving the Jefferson County market since 1906. Stop in and see why our bank is the fastest growing bank in Jefferson County. Community First Bank, welcome back to Personal Banking, member FDIC. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX and WMIXSports.com. Glad to have you with us. Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwinski and Jeff Crow in studio, powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. That's right. This is WMIX Mount Vernon, a free service from Weathers Broadcasting, bottom of the 8 o'clock hour. We welcome Johnny Hollis to the program. He is the head coach of the Cesar Valier Waltonville Woodlawn Red Devils. Coach, good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. I, I know we were wishing for a better morning, but you go into the train yard last night, always a tough place to play. The Mules, of course, a tough team this year. 
uh, you know, haven't had a chance to look at the complete box score, but 28-6 is the final on that one last night. But I, th- I think it's one of those where you know, have to still be pretty proud of your effort. Fairfield is tough. Fairfield's a tough place to play. Yeah. Uh, uh, last night I can't uh, fault our kids' effort at all. Uh, it was We played hard. We just made uh, costly mistakes at, at huge times in the game. I mean, second quarter there, we're 13-6, and we're in the game, and, and then we uh, turned the ball over like an interception, and they scored, you know, on an interception. So then they're talking, you know, and then you're talking 21-6, and, and uh, right before half, and that's just, you know, it's tough going into the halftime with something like that happening. Since Fairfield joined the Black Diamond, it seems like the Mules and Red Devils had a nice a little rivalry going on. Not anything out of the ordinary, just a nice little competitive rivalry. Was this game much the same last night between the two schools? It was. It was. Uh, we've had a lot of success uh, uh, against them since, like, 2008. And um, uh, we knew they weren't really going to overlook us, you know, no matter what our record was. And um, it, it was a hard-fought uh, ball game on both sides. I felt like it was a well-coached game on both sides. And, uh, it was just hard to stop and get their offense off the field. They just uh, grounded and pounded and, and chewed the clock up. Looking at your team last night, as you mentioned, they grounded and pounded. They held your team to 24 yards rushing, but you were able to throw the ball a lot last night, 110 yards passing from Nick Marlowe. How has he changed over the first seven weeks of being a high school quarterback? Uh, he's learning how to extend the play better and uh, – you know, he, he's not got a lot of time to throw, so he's making plays with his legs and his arm. And, uh, he made some good plays for us last night. He was upset with some mistakes he made, uh, but you, know, you just try to keep coaching the kid up. And, and one thing about it, I mean, he's always ready to to put it behind him and, and uh, start fresh again, you know, the next set of downs. So, um, you know, we've got we've got some good things going on. It's hard to see them when you're 2-5. and five. Um but we're just trying to stay positive with the kids, and, and uh, we challenged them last night. You know, we can't quit. we got two more games, and we play a tough car, my team, uh, this Friday. Uh, speaking of the next two weeks, as you mentioned, it's, fair, it's a disappointment, obviously, two and five with two to go. You know there's only two games left in the season. It's kind of two different perspectives. You have seniors who have two games left in their high school careers. You have un- younger guys that are looking to make a moment. Is this a case where over the next two weeks, the 2014 season begins for you as you start to look at the younger guys looking for spots for next season? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, all year long we were thinking about next season. I know we don't want to look too far forward, but at the same time as a coach, you got the responsibility of uh, looking ahead a little bit. Uh, you don't want to overlook any teams you're playing, but at the same time you got to get – get guys prepared for next year. Um, we're going to, I just told the guys last night, we're going to make the most of it. Uh, we're going to try to do the best job we can as a coaching staff to let the seniors still have their their moments in the sun and, and at the same time try to get younger guys ready and get, you know, just situational subs, you know, uh, in moments where we can catch guys' reps and, and get them uh, on the field in a varsity game. So uh, we're going we're gonna to make the most of it and, you uh, we're going to do the best we can to finish well this season. I asked this again because I just noticed again you have the opportunity to scout a team on a Saturday before you play them. I mean, how ironic is that in a schedule where you got four chances to actually see a team play live before you actually have to coach against them? Yeah, it's it's weird. You know, I mean, it's it's, it's different. It's the way this thing is laid out for us this year. Our schedule's been weird overall. I mean, it's three of the toughest games, you know, at the beginning of the season, and then three on the road at the end. It's a little bit like baseball. You know, you go to, you know, at your home stand, then you go on the road for a series. and um, You know, it's just been a weird year scheduling-wise for us. And maybe it has been for a couple other teams, too. I've talked to a couple other coaches. But it's just the way everything uh, fell. And, uh, it, is, it is a little different, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing what teams do today. Well, and of course, you get that chance to, of course, scout another team, but you, t- you take a look at the rest of the season, and I think you have to kind of take a look back and realize that this season, for all intents and purposes, has been a success thus far. Yeah, I mean, we've seen a lot of good things and, and gotten some great play out of a lot of guys, and, um, you know, it's been a, it, uh, football seasons are a roller coaster ride. Uh, it's ups and downs, ups and downs, and 
And uh, this year we just we've had a little a little more downs than ups, but at the same time, I think kids have grown not just uh, uh, not just football, but I you know our goal and our staff is for our guys to be mentors. And at the end of the day, that's that's one of the most important things to me. It's always more fun to win, uh, but at the same time, there's things larger than just football. And I say that whether we're winning or losing, and. Uh, it's, there's being some things instilled in these guys that I think they're never going to forget. And some bonds are being made. You know, are you talking about the locker room or the bus rides? And it's all the special stuff about the sport and sports in general that guys get out of their education that they wouldn't normally get if they didn't play uh, athletics. Two weeks to go in your season, of course, two more times. Of course, on this season, we'll get to ask you the W Mike Sports social media question of the week. And we really don't know if this is kind of mood we're all in this morning or what, but our question this week is, what is your biggest pet peeve? Um, oh man. <laughs> My wife would say I have a bunch of them. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, we, we know that. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, I would say laziness. Uh Laziness and uh, the word can't, man, that drives me nuts. At our house, that's like uh, can't a four-letter word. So, uh, you know, just laziness and, and just say I can't before you even try. That's kind of my pet peeve. Hmm. I'm in complete agreement with, with the laziness. Coach, obviously we, we wish the best of luck to the Red Devils the rest of the way. Good luck this coming week. and We look forward to talking to you again next week here on the Saturday Sports Show. Hey, thanks, guys. Appreciate the coverage. Always a pleasure with Johnny Hollis, of course, of the Cestrovalier, Waltonville, Woodlawn Red Devils, and of course the Devils have a, a big one coming up in Diamond Play on Friday night. At Carmine. I always have to double check because you never at know Carmine, sometimes. At Carmine, at Elvarado Trico to end up weeks eight and nine. So, I mean. It's a tough go. Got to go to Carmine, Elvarado Trico. Would, you would think that the Red Devils can end the year on a positive note and over the next two weeks. You know, seniors are going to strap it up for the last time, but you got sophomores and juniors that are playing for spots for next season to show the coaches and the coaching staff, hey, look at me, look at me, I can play, put me in next year in 2014. Well, exactly. It's a chance to audition and a chance to shine, of course. Don't forget our WMIX sports social media question. What is your pet peeve? <laughs> we have plenty. Uh, most of them uh, probably won't make it to airtime, though. But no. you might find them on Facebook. <laughs> Mine's a lengthy list. Like, I'm just ready to roll and get them all out there, but we don't Are have we time need for an that. extra segment for you? Uh, probably. You had a lot so, of them last night on the way home. I think that's the the bad thing about road games is that every time we find more of you, maybe I'm just maybe the problem is me, and, and not a, and not everybody else. So we'll figure it out. Well, hey, you know, accepting is the first step. Are you telling me that I am the least common denominator, Saxon well, Math? I'm just saying that you were rather <laughs> boisterous last night on your way home about many of things. That happens. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Many of things around the universe you were not happy with last night on the ride back. And oddly enough, none of them having anything to do with high school football. Right. <laughs> well, so I don't, I don't want anybody to think it's anything like that. It's just maybe the industry uh, that we are in. But well, other than yeah, that. Yeah, there was, there was industry issues last night for you, so, yes. And nothing with this particular no, station. It was, no, it's I just, love I love my company that I work for. We were, we, <laughs> yes, we've heard. <laughs> So yeah. uh, we need to take a break here on the Saturday Sports, and I actually truly do mean that. I love Withers Broadcasting. Glad to be here with you. We're here until 10 o'clock. Uh, we'll take a break, come back with WMAX Sports Correspondent Todd Rushing here on the Saturday Sports Show. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. That's Crossroads Community Hospital. Glad to have them along, too. Back after these. Mount Vernon is home to many wonderful people and things, and that includes quality cardiac care from Dr. Ruzek Ibrahim. A skilled cardiologist, Dr. Ibrahim's training and scientific accomplishments have earned his designation as a Fellow of the American College of Cardiology. His services range from preventative care to the treatment of advanced heart conditions. For an appointment with Dr. Ibrahim at Crossroads Specialty Clinic, call 241-9071 or visit in person at 4113 South Water Tower. Mount Vernon. Luxury has been reinvented with the technological innovations from the 2013 Lincoln MKX and MKZ. Hi, Roy Schmidt Lincoln dealer at Ford Square Mount Vernon. The king of luxury crossovers is back with many innovations including heated and cooled front seats, panoramic vista roof, and available ambient lighting. You'll love everything the MKX has to offer. And don't forget the redesigned 2013 Lincoln MKZ. With elegant fluid lines, every surface is faceted like the many dimensions of discovery. 
for a very limited time, enjoy $4,000 in dealer discounts, plus 0% financing for up to 60 months on the MKX and MKZ. Come see our selection of Lincoln Luxury at Ford Square Mount Vernon, 1501 Broadway in Mount Vernon, or online at FordSquare.com. And glad to have you back on the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX and WMIXSports.com. It's presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Hey, it's what health care should be. Welcome to the program. Our WMIX sports correspondent, Todd Rushing. Of course, he witnessed Columbia and Central last night. Breeze Central, that is, out of the Cahokia Conference. Columbia took that one 24-6. Todd, how was it last night from Cahokia Conference football? Well, that was probably the best game, most competitive game I've seen all year. It was 6 to nothing very late, Columbia. Scored some points late to put it out to twenty-four to nothing, and Breeze got a late touchdown on the subs. But that was a, it was a six-nothing game, well into the fourth quarter, and uh, very competitive. And just a few turnovers here and a couple penalties really kept that from being a you know, an outstanding game. That uh, Breeze kind of shot themselves in the foot a few times, a couple penalties in key situations, so they could have put some points on the board earlier. La- over the last decade or so, the Coca Conference is kind of on that periphery. You're familiar with it, coaching there and having to coach against teams in that conference. But we've seen Trenton Westcliff, we've seen Carlisle, we've seen Redbud, you know, Breeze Central come in and dominate some teams from around the conferences down here. How- what credit does the Coca Conference deserve, and what can you talk about it as far as the strength of athletics in that particular conference in the state of Illinois? Well, you know, I would, I would. Give the Coke, you kind of, they're in the same kind of situation as like the Black Diamond. You know, they don't get all the credit they deserve, but generally the top couple teams in that league, just like in the, in the Black Diamond, especially the old Black Diamond, and Cardio, the top, top two or three teams would be very, very competitive with anybody. You know, they, they got some good athletes. Columbia is a nice high school, and so is Breeze. They're both, you know, over 600 students, so they've got some, uh, some good athletes. There's two of the better athletes I've seen all year on the field last night. What, the Timmerman boy for Central, and I'm not sure what the boy's name for, uh, Columbia was, but their running back, I think, was, uh, Isringhausen. I don't get the one to say Isringhausen because of the pitcher. I think it's just Isringhausen. But uh, very nice football players, two of the better kids I've seen this year. And, uh, you know, it, it's a competitive league. Like I said, the top teams can compete with schools their size pretty well. But uh, I think that every year in and year out, the bottom teams aren't. It's not competitive up and down through the league. Usually have that one or two teams that stand out, and that's, I'd give them a knock a little bit. Three Central, of course, in Columbia, the two biggest schools. Columbia with an enrollment of football at 666. And Breeze Central at 559. But Columbia is a team this year at Scott Horner last few years. They've kind of battled that soccer bug over the last few years where they've had some down teams, but they're kind of stirred back. Is this a year for Columbia, or, or are they basically a year away and they're trying to enjoy some success for a couple of years now? Well, I think they've still got some young kids playing. I think they're going to be pretty good again next year. But, uh, you know, they're, they're a nice team. They, they don't play a lot of kids. they got a lot of kids that just go one way. they got some pretty good depth. But, uh, and I think last last night, I think like the gentleman sitting next to me told me that they were missing one of the better running backs, too, that he's out. So they get him back next week. So, yeah, they can be pretty competitive, and especially what they do. Scott Dillon has that wide-open offense, and he does an excellent job with that hurry-up stuff. And, you know, if you get against teams that, even though they may be a great team, if they've not seen that, you can cause some problems for them. So they're the kind of team that can sneak up on somebody if uh, they're not well, really well prepared. Bruce Central's a team, of course, obviously won a state basketball title a year plus ago now, and, and of course have played very well in football, making the playoffs last couple of years. They go to four and three. They got to go at Westland, who's winless, and then are, then the, I should say they've got to go then host Alt, East Alton Rivers two and four. This is a Central team, probably going to make the playoffs. What do you see for them as as far as they can advance in the playoffs? Well, you know, last night they were pretty mistake prone. They had some key turnovers in situations they didn't need them, and they, and they had some penalties. A couple of silly, couple, you know, a couple of penalties you're always going to get, and you, you don't know if you really did or not. There's a couple of them that were really silly kind of penalties that they really hurt themselves. One was an unsportsmanlike thing on a kid's shoving a kid, and those kind of things you can correct. So, you know, if they can get themselves under control, I think they can be ready. They're a nice physical football team, and they've got an outstanding Timmerman kid is a terrific athlete. He's he's the kind of kid that's capable of going distance anytime he touches the ball. You've got to really keep him under control. So, um, you know, they're going to be a 4A school. That's going to be tough because you get that 4A, you start getting some awfully good teams up there in the middle of the state. And, and so so it's going to be pretty tough on them because I hate that competition level. If you haven't played a lot of really tough teams, it, it hurts you. I've said that for years. It's just, and when I was coaching the River River here, you got 6-3, and three, you got out of there, you're going to be pretty good because you've been tested 
all, every week. Columbia is 7-0. and They go to Redbud in Nashville. They'll be prohibited favorites to go 9-0, and probably looking at a number one seed in the Southern Complex, a Class 4A, depending on how they divide the state. Around Southern Illinois last night, a game or games, or anything that stuck out to you when you saw a score or a highlight last night? Uh, well, it depends. There aren't any games stuck out of the, the score fest there. You know, I kept getting updates. My battery went low on my phone. Everybody texted me to give me the scores. I guess nobody like could really stop anybody. I was surprised that there was that many points put on the board in that game. I thought it might be a 34-30 game or something like that, but I didn't think there would be you know, almost 100 points scored in that football game. <laughs> At all, at going in last night, one of the big things that happened, kind of going under the radar a little bit, maybe not in this town, but it is, you know, kind of quietly last night. AJ goes in, wins their 14 straight playoff appearance under Brett Dietering. Ducoin loses their fifth game of the year, will not see the playoffs. I mean, I, I mean, it's not surprising because Ducoin did start season 0 4, but in, in all in terms, a shock in Ducoin land not to have a chance at the playoffs the seven weeks in the football season. Yeah, it is got to be. But, you know, I I suspect I told everybody last year. You know, as when I still thought I was going to be in this, that uh, I really thought we could be very competitive here. Things. I thought our league was going to be down some this year. The Ducoin was definitely going to come back. They, we knew they had a couple of years there, but they didn't have near the talent level they've had. I mean, and, and nothing against the kid person. But anytime you know Ducoin starting to freshman, you know the talent level is not this. Because that would have never been something you saw ever in the past. And, uh, you know, they're tipped their ass and last night because I know Kemp and the, the good receiver were both injured. So I think they've won that game. With a backup quarterback and without some of their main weapons, so that's a, that's a big win for them. Anytime you beat the coin, uh, even when on a down year when you're playing without some of your people, yeah, it's got to be a shock to coin. But you know they'll, they'll recover. Everybody has it goes to cycles. When your school's this size, there's going to be a phase come through there where your your talent level is just down, and, and it, it'll come back. Of course, that brings us to the ever famous WMIX Sports Social Media Question of the Week, and. Not sure if it's just because of our, our mood this morning or my mood last night, but we want to know, what is your pet peeve? My pet peeve? Oh, golly. You should have given me this question a week ago so I could wrote you the list. Uh, <laughs> uh, gosh, my pet peeve. I, I hate to hear people, I, I said at the game last night, I hate to hear people complain about the kids or the officials or the coaches who, uh, quite obviously, you can tell, probably never strapped on a set of pads or played a game in their lives, you know, the, they need to realize the people out there are doing the best they can. Those kids don't put all those hours in these coaches or referees don't do that because they just want to make mistakes. They do it because they love the game and enjoy playing, and they're doing the best they can. We need to give them that credit. Amen to that. And, of course, I, I think that is it, it's one of those where I think a lot of times people, and I know I'm guilty of this myself, we, you just kind of lose track of, of what it's all about and, and that it, it's a bunch of kids out there trying to have fun and trying to learn the great game of football, especially in this case. So, Todd, we appreciate the time you give us and, and the insight you give us each and every week, and we'll do it again next week. I enjoy it greatly, guys. Look forward to seeing you. That's Todd Rushing, of course, WYX Sports Correspondent. Here on the Saturday Sports Show, we'll come back with John Shadow, and we'll talk about the games Multiple that he witnessed last yeah, night, of multiple. course. Start out the South 7, ended up elsewhere. We'll talk about that with John Shadowins after the break here on the Saturday Sports Show. It's powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. I'm Michael Stack with a look at your next round weather. Nice and warm with intervals of clouds and sunny skies alongside a shower or thunderstorm in spots developing later on. Today's high 76. Late tonight, partly cloudy skies, low 48. Remaining warm with intervals of clouds and sunshine Sunday, high 76. Clouds mixing in with sunny skies Monday, high 73. Possible showers and thunderstorms Tuesday, high 74. Next round weather from WMIX, Mount Vernon, Illinois. Dig in with full contact coal miner training at Red Lake College. Learn in our new 20,000 square feet coal mine training center. Use real equipment like continuous miners and power sitters. And check out the new mine rescue and fire safety training tunnel. Associate degree and occupational certificates available. We're full contact, hands-on coal mining. Real equipment, real live all the time. What are you waiting for? Call 618-437-5321 and get started. Mount Vernon is home to many wonderful people and things, and that includes quality cardiac care from Dr. Ruzek Ibrahim. A skilled cardiologist, Dr. Ibrahim's training and scientific accomplishments have earned his designation as a fellow of the American College of Cardiology. His services range from preventative care to the treatment of advanced heart conditions. For an appointment with Dr. Ibrahim at Crossroads Specialty Clinic, call 241 241- 9071 or visit in person at 4113 South Water Tower, Mount Vernon.
And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX and WMIXSports.com, all presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Of course, our next guest took in a little bit of the South 7, and I, I say a little bit. He was able to find another game to go to last night. We'll talk about both of those and more with John Shadowins, WMIX Sports Correspondent. John, good morning. Good morning, guys. I don't know that I've ever called you by your first name. I believe it's always been coach, but a nice change of pace, I suppose. But uh, you went to a South 7 Conference game to start last night, Centralia Marion, and I think that once we learned of the injury to Matisse Scott for the Orphans, their their key running back, I think this one ended up the way we thought it would. Yeah, you know, I, a couple of things to take from that game. First of all, you know, the Orphans were, were, were outmanned. Um, no running game to speak of, like like you alluded to, but I'm not sure that would have made that big a difference had, had the young man been able to play. I did enjoy getting the chance to see uh, Coach Colley up close and his command of the game, the football team. And I don't want to say what well, he reminds me of so much is Steve Spurrier back in Florida. Uh, he's out there with no play card at all. He uh, you know he, he signals in the, the plays through his offense. Uh, and his command of his team and the situation, the way he can, I mean, he, he calls the game by feel. And uh, I've never seen anything quite like it on the high school level. I, and I know that there are some old school coaches that don't have a play card. But seeing a younger guy like Colleen do it that way was very impressive. First time seeing Marion last night for you, what did you take away from Marion and Coach Kerry Martin? Well, it, it, it's a well coached team that takes what the other team will give them. And last night, Marion found out early they could run the football. I think they came in wanting to have more of a balanced attack, and the Orphans' athleticism gave them some, gave them some problems at, at the beginning of the ball game. They, they weren't able to pass the ball like they wanted to. But once they started tightening the formation up and running the ball uh, at Centralia, uh, the Orphans had no answer. Then you decided at halftime we got a text that said you were off and running, you'd seen enough, and you went north to Benton Massac. A game that Benton led at one point nineteen to seven turned out Benton won twenty five twenty two. And what did you get to see out of the Rangers in the second half? Well, you know, losing Button again uh, hurt the Rangers. I mean, as he goes, so go the Rangers. And uh, the Orr kid stepped in and did an admirable job. You know, it, holding them, holding the Rangers, uh, holding the lead for one thing. Uh, the field goal that Benton picked up midway through the fourth quarter um, on a, on a nice little drive that that the Orr engineered was, was huge. They were up 19-14, and uh, the, the Patriots had all the momentum at that point. You could just feel it in the crowd that uh, the Benton was in trouble. And they, they, they drove the ball down, kicked the field goal to stabilize things. And had they not kicked that field goal, they wouldn't have won the game, I don't believe. With Bunton being day-to-day, it seems like he's been day-to-day all year. Obviously, if he's, if he's out, does Benton have that opportunity to do something over the next couple of weeks at Murphy and then at Carlisle to try to get in the playoffs? You know, I, I think without uh, at least a semi-healthy spike button, Benton will struggle in both those football games. Going to Murphy, uh, you know, after watching what Murphy did at Harrisburg last night, playing them tough, and then I, I know that Carlisle's going to be tough. So um, Benton, Benton's got their backs against the wall without spike. But, you know, I would be very, very surprised to see spike button not play in those two ball games. Last night, several. We looked at week seven, Chris and I did. It's kind of like a throwaway. Not, you know, obviously all the games can matter, but there wasn't a lot of enticing games on the schedule. After the games go into book, besides the two this afternoon, was there a score or outcome that kind of surprised you in general from last night? You know, I, you know, I expect you to ask that each week, and then I was looking through the scores this morning and the stats. And look, the only one that jumped out at me, Danny was that 300-yard rushing performance by the young man from Nashville. That, that was eye-popping, as well as, as, uh, as offensive fireworks from that game. Pinkneyville, I think, put up, what, 43 on, uh, or 50-something on Nashville last night. So that, that was a surprise. Going into next week, it's conference championship week. Obviously, Heron's looking to close out the Ohio Cartervilles all by themselves in the Mississippi. Uh, the Black Diamonds up for grabs over the next couple of weeks. South 7, Kokia with a win at home could win it all in the South 7, surprisingly. And, uh, you know, here's the thing. Is there really a team right now for you that are possibly going to be a conference champ that could make a run besides Carterville? Well, you know, after Carterville, I really don't think so this year, Danny. Uh, I, I hate to say that football is down down here, but the, the talent level isn't quite at the level. We don't have the playmakers that, that we've had in recent years. There's not really a stifling defense that I have seen out there, and that's what worries me about Carterville. I, I, I don't think that Carterville has the defense to make a make a deep run. I hope they prove me wrong, but 
that that's my feelings on that. And, of course, our feelings have been all over the place this morning with high school football and things in general, which is what leads us to the WAX Sports social media question this week, which is we want to know, what is your pet peeve? You know, I'd love to give a philosophical answer like Coach Shannon and Coach Hollis did about laziness and, and, and that sort of thing. You know what really is bothering me right now as I hold my cup of coffee is that I cannot make a decent pot of coffee. You and me both, and I know that I felt like I've related to every answer this morning, but sometimes I'm the one that makes the coffee around here, and people think that I'm lazy when I don't make the pot of coffee here at work every morning, but my coffee's horrible. Yeah, I'm right there with you, brother. I mean, I don't. it doesn't even matter how many scoops or how much water I put in. It literally tastes awful no, every single time. No, I've tried everything as well. That's <laughs> why it's easier just to go get a cup, because at least if it's bad at like a C-store or something, you have somebody else to blame other than yourself. Exactly right. <laughs> Coach, can't wait to do it again next week. I'm sure you'll be able to pick another good game, and we'll be able to break it down right here on the Saturday Sports Show. We appreciate everything you've done for us over the past couple of years, and look forward to continuing it over the course of this year and into the future as well. Yes, sir. Have a good day, guys. You do the same. That's John Shadow, my Sports Correspondent. I really love... Uh, what Coach Shadowins and Coach Rushing have added to our program this year. And, of course, um, I know Coach Shadowins has been able to do some basketball broadcasts for us as well, hoping that we can extend an invitation over the coming seasons to our other WMIX sports correspondent as well. As Believe it or not, even though it is still high school football, high school volleyball, high school cross country, high school tennis, high school boys soccer season, uh, this is when we begin planning our boys' basketball coverage and our girls' basketball coverage as well. We feel it's dynamite, dynamo, huh? What's well, not during the season? Um talking off mic i'm confused but any, oh i yeah. get what we're doing there yeah but anyhow i get it now but uh yes we this is the time that we begin playing our basketball coverage and uh tentatively uh, not publicly released yet we feel that we're going to have another good basketball season here at wmix sports but not taking away from any of the other sports still plenty to talk about of course we have some fundraisers today of course mount vernon rams baseball golf outing is today 11 o'clock is a start over there at green hills golf club i'm not sure if couldn't remember about walk-up registrations, but you can always check it out. If not, see uh, some good and bad golf today, I'm sure, out there at Green Hills as Mount Vernon Rams baseball will benefit from that. Or you can just go out there and cut them a nice check, help them make some uh, nice improvements to Brennan Klein Memorial Field. Also help them uh, pay for some lodging whenever they go down to McCracken County, Kentucky, uh, come Easter weekend in late April, I believe it is, in 2014. We'll be down there. Well, I will. I hopefully, you, hopefully we both will. Just see how that works out. Top of the hour, WMIX Mount Vernon, a free service from Withers Broadcasting. Of course, Sam Root will join us coming up later. We'll talk about their fundraiser. Big fish fry out in Blueford tonight. We'll talk about all of that coming up here on the Saturday Sports Show. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll have some more scores. The WMIXSports.com scoreboard. This is the Saturday Sports Show powered by Crossroads Community Hospitals. More than a hospital. It's what healthcare should be. Back after these. The tradition of fine vehicles and great service continues at Second Chance Auto. They've been providing quality cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs for families like yours for over 33 years. And many are priced under $10,000. Plus, most have a three-month or 3,000-mile warranty. Bank rate financing available with instant approval. No gimmicks, no pressure, just honest deals on great vehicles from your friends and neighbors at Second Chance Auto. Living and contributing back to the community they serve. Located on Route 142 East in Mount Vernon, call 244-4582. Attention all Medicare Part D pharmacy patients. The annual enrollment period begins October 15th and ends December 7th. And the Medicine Shop Pharmacy is ready to help you. Stop by or call to make an appointment with Eric Black or Tracy Adams. They'll review your current prescription plan and help you manage your Medicare dollars. Here's pharmacist and pharmacy owner Eric Black. What we offer to our patients is to sit down with them and answer questions that they may have about their medications, really with the end goal of being to maximize their dollars. Because that's, after all, what patients really, really want. We'll take appointments, we'll sit down with them, take as long as it takes to help them choose a plan that is effective at meeting their needs. Remember, the good folks at the Medicine Shop Pharmacy are never too busy to take care of you. They look forward to understanding your health care needs and will focus on keeping you well. The Medicine Shop Pharmacy, 2339 Broadway in Mount Vernon. To call to make an appointment, call 618-242-8776. Back 
back on the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, WMIXSports.com. Of course, rolling through the first hour, an hour, barely an hour, number two, of course, coming your way here on AM 940 and WMIXSports.com. We've talked with Jared Shaner, Johnny Hollis, Todd Rushing, John Shadowins thus far. Still time to answer our WMIX Sports social media question of the week on Facebook and Twitter. And now hoping to take a look at the WMIXSports.com scoreboard. Mount Vernon. Loses last night, as you know, game here on WMIX 39-32. Then it was Carbondale losing to Alta 48-44 and Marion beating Centralia 50-7. Then it was Rochester over Springfield Southeast 49-32. Then it was Civic beating Mascuda 27-21. Jersey beat Triad 70-34. And Mount Carmel beat Vincennes, Indiana 27 27- 14. Benton beat Massac 25-22. Harrisburg over Murphy 27-20. And Heron beats West Frankfurt 63-19. DuCoin loses at AJ 36-15. Pinckneyville beats Nashville 53-46. Carterville beats Sparta 52-16. CZR wins again, beats Hamco 47-14. Chester over Elverado Trico 55-zip. And Fairfield over SVWW. 28 to 6 scores with that, and more scores other than that are located at WMAXSports.com. I like it. <laughs> Just thinking about the WMAX Sports social media question. Of course, what is your pet peep? Time to participate in the discussion. And I was just basically thinking I almost have a way to tie in my morning experience at a local convenience store together with all of our answers so far. All right. Are, are we doing this now then? No, we are not. Okay. <laughs> I don't mean it like that. I just mean we have time a little bit later on. I don't know that uh, the two-minute break and then we need to get to Josh McCurr, and I don't know that that'll be enough time to uh, diagnose and assess uh, some of the pet peeves that could be had here in this very studio. We're broadcasting live from the WMIX studios this morning, as we do each and every Saturday morning here on the Saturday Sports Show. It's powered by Crossroads Community Hospital, and it's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Amen to that. We'll take that break, come back with Josh McCurr and CZR Bearcats. Big win last night. Back after these. This is Chase Landers with Landers Collision Centers. Imagine this. You're driving down the road. It's dark as can be outside. Thank goodness you just had that left headlight bulb replaced. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see a thing. Now, close your eyes. Okay, don't close your eyes. You're supposed to be driving. Imagine noticing a slight twinkle off to the left, just above the ditch. What is that, you think to yourself? All of a sudden, whap! You've just encountered your first deer hit. The left side of your vehicle is beat up pretty bad. The next thing I want you to imagine is very simple. Picking up your phone and dialing one landers to set up your repair. Deer claims are common, and usually a very simple process, which fall under comprehensive coverage. This is Chase Landers asking you to allow Landers to be your collision repair shop of choice. Whether it be a deer hit, fender bender, or the regular, uh oh, sorry mom, Landers is here for you whenever you need us, big or small, Landers fixes them all. One triple eight Landers. That's one eight 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 Landers. This is your local State Farm agent Tony Wilt. I want to thank Mount Vernon and the surrounding area for continuing to support us over the past five years. If you have never sat down with someone to go over your insurance program, let me invite you into our office. Let us show you what working with the industry leader, represented by a local agent, can do for you. I'm located just off 42nd Street. You can reach our office 24 hours a day at 242-1421 or on the web at TonyWilt.com. Thanks again and go Rams! An homage as I sit there and listen to that song and just admire it. Although I'm not going to homage by going on and on about it, though, here on the Saturday Sports Show. It's powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Black Diamond Conference play last night. Of course, the CZR Bearcats get a big win over McLeansboro, 47-14. to Glad to be talking about it this morning with Josh McCurran, head coach of the Bearcats. Coach, good morning. Good win. Thank you very much. Good morning to you guys. Uh, yes, it, it was a good win for us. Um, you know, we're pretty excited about it. Going back a couple of weeks, we want to go back to the rivalry game with SVWW, all the stuff that goes into you know what you guys have done with Coach Hollis with the Red Devils in the summer, and then, of course, playing for a sign. What Explain to our listeners who may not know about it. In week five, when you play the Red Devils, what, do you, what does the winning team get to take home with them as part of a pride and a rivalry thing? 
Well, uh, the, basically the prize uh, that goes along with just the pride of winning is a actual 148 road sign. So, uh, you know, we Coach Hollis did a great job of getting that started. And, uh, you know, one thing that's great about it is it allows you to compete through the summer, all summer long, and uh, gives you something to strive for at the, at the end of the summer and then go into the, to the regular season for that game. I've had my eye on your team once the Cesar Valera win, well, the Woodlawn win was done. And then your team last week gave Chester probably one of their better games all year besides Carmi. You get a big win last night in Hamilton County. I've been watching your team over the last two or three weeks in these box scores. Is your team starting to gain some experience, feel themselves out, and starting to understand that you know they can compete and have a shot with a couple more wins and maybe make the playoffs? Yeah, I think they are. You know what? That's, that's one thing that uh, – that our team has done a good job of this year, and I think we're improving each week. And, um, you know, when you do that, you know, everybody starts out slow. You kind of get to some uh, pieces to the puzzle figured out, and, you know, and I, I think we're, we're finally there where we're, we've got some kids where we need need them to play, and they're doing a good job for us. And, and uh, everything's, you know, going, going pretty well right now. We just have to keep improving each week like we have been. And... Uh, you know, we're we're just looking forward for the for the opportunity next week against Vienna. Vienna Goreville at home, of course. That's a that's a Saturday afternoon, twelve o'clock game for the homecoming in Christopher. And been to a few games there, broadcast a few games there for that homecoming day at Christopher. A very special time for our listeners. What is it like at Christopher? You get to play a Saturday afternoon game with homecoming and all the festivities there. Well, it's very exciting. It's it's very exciting for the, for the fans, uh, for for the communities. Uh, you know, it's it's a great week. Uh, People get to come home and, and uh, see their grandkids, uh, you know, their nieces, nephews, uh, and everything. So it's a great week. Um, one thing that we strive to, to our kids that I'm really going to make a point to is, is you know, there's the, the whole point of the homecoming is the football game. You know, if it wasn't for the football game, then a lot of times you wouldn't have the homecoming. So we're going we're gonna to do our best to keep the kids focused this week. Uh, we, we have a job to do there on Saturday afternoon. It is going to be an exciting time. Uh, but we, we have to stay focused because uh, Coach Rude and and uh, the Eagles are going to come, come into town. They're going to be ready to play, and, and uh, we have to be ready for them. Looking at last night, a guy that's been getting a lot of pub and kind of putting your team on his back is Jacob Towers, more known for his basketball prowess. Right now, he's one of the better quarterbacks in Southern Illinois. As far as yardage, he throws for 60 more yards last night, rushed for a pair of touchdowns. I mean, he's kind of putting him on the back, and the younger guy, he's going to be there a while for you. Yeah, I tell you what, Jake has, has been tremendous uh, for us in our program. Um, you know, he, he does a lot of things with his feet and, and you know, in his arm, being able to, to run and, and get a scramble or, or make that pass that we need. But what, what he does uh, that's special about him is, is his uh, mental toughness. You know, he's like having another coach on the field, and uh, he, he helps our young guys back there. We have a very young backfield. We start two sophomores and a junior in our backfield, and uh, anytime they have any questions, you know, they know they can look up to Jake, and he'll, he'll tell, you know, let them know, hey, this is what you have to do on this one, uh, and so forth. So it's, it's great. It's like having another, another coach on the field for us, and uh, he has improved a ton over the last season, and that's, that's you know, attributed to his hard uh, work ethic. A bend but no break defense last night allowed 237 yards rushing, held the Foxes to only three yards passing. Your team rushed for 225 yards last night. It's a good balance for your team and finding that way out. You don't have to rely on one or the other. How does that help out? You know, everybody kind of looking at Mr. Towers, how does that help out when they know they got to worry about the rest of your team instead of just queuing in on one guy? Well, I mean, I think it's, it's good to have a balanced balanced attack uh that that's one thing that that our offense does is you know we have four four possible options each play who can, who can run the ball and uh you know and the same way you know we we have our options if we go to pass the ball um so that does balance everything out i feel and then in my three years here this third year this is the balance we've ever been and uh, you know i i think that's it's a tribute to the kids the kids have worked hard uh they, they're finally understanding the offense and you know, they're, they're understanding that, you know, everything sets up everything else. I put one play here, we'll set up another play there. And, they're, you know, they're doing a, a terrific job of, of learning. Uh, when we put new stuff in, they, they pick it up very quickly. And uh, having a balanced, balanced offense and, and four 
running backs who can do a good job is, is a very, very big factor for us. Last two weeks, of course, at home, as we mentioned, Vine and Goreville home next week at noon. Then you host Carmi at home on a Friday night. That's got to be nice to know you control your own destiny. You have both those games at home to try to take care of that. It really is. You know, we've, we've been road warriors this year, and, uh, you know, we played five uh, five road games. And so to be able to come home and have the last, last two at home is, is great for us. But uh, at the same time, we have – Two of the toughest teams in the conference that's going to be coming in. Uh, you know, Diana Goreville, they're, they're very tough. They've improved all season long. Uh, Coach Rude is, is one of the best coaches in, in the state, and he's going to have his kids ready to play. Uh, and then, you know, the following week with, with Coach Simon and, and Carmel White County, they're always, always tough. They have Chase Saylor, who's one of the best athletes in Southern Illinois, uh, coming in. So we, we do know what we have to do, and, uh, we're going to work hard as we can to, to try to achieve that goal. And, um, you know, I told the kids we have basically we're in the – this is our postseason right now. We cannot lose. Uh, if we lose, we get our fifth loss, we're out of the playoffs. So last night was the opportunity to get – to uh, earn win one, and we're going to work hard this week and try to go get win two. Very impressive job last night and the last two out of three weeks. Before we let you go, we'll ask you our WMIX Sports social media question of the week. And this week's question is, what is your biggest pet peeve? Oh, pet peeve? Yes, pet peeve. Whew. Uh, boy, I tell you what, that's a tough. I have several. <laughs> we can go through them all if you want. We're just, we want to know. Okay. Yeah. Um, one of my biggest pet peeves is, is uh, you know, I always have to tell kids or whatever, you know, and if they say, can you use the bathroom or whatever like that, I, you know, I always have to say, all right, make, your, make sure and wash your hands. You have to make sure and wash your hands, you know, something like that. And some kids will say, yeah, yeah, whatever, you know, whatever. And so, I, you know, I just I want them to go ahead and do that and get that out of the way. And that just, I, I don't like it when people do that. Uh, it's kind of a Seinfeld thing, isn't it, where they didn't wash yeah. their hands and they go touch food. Is that how this works? <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, that's what it is. I, I just, I, I'm always washing my hands and everything. And so I know that's kind of a strange type of pet peeve, but that's what I could think of at the moment. No. That is not strange at all, being a football coach and in an education. That is not strange. <laughs> coach, we appreciate your time. Congratulations on the big win, and hopefully we can do this again soon here on the Saturday Sports All right. Show. I thank you guys, and you guys have a wonderful weekend. Thanks, you too. That's Josh McCurran, of course, head coach of the CZR Bearcats. They will have the Vianna goreville Co-op, of course, the Eagles. Um, I believe that is going to be next Saturday, actually. Homecoming for both. Of course, the Bearcats homecoming being at home at noon. Mike Root returns to his alma mater on a Saturday afternoon at 12. Whew, that's the sound of my mind blowing. I, I did not realize that was his alma mater. Do now. There you go. Learn something new every day here on the Saturday Sports Show. We're going to learn something from Todd Thomas here in just a moment, I guess. Pickneyville Panthers beat the uh, Nashville Hornets last night by a score of 53-46. to 46. Still plenty more football talk to come. Plenty more local sports talk to come on the Saturday Sports Show. Powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. I'm Michael Stack with a look at your next rad weather. Nice and warm with intervals of clouds and sunny skies alongside a shower or thunderstorm in spots developing later on. Today's high 76. Late tonight, partly cloudy skies, low 48. Remaining warm with intervals of clouds and sunshine Sunday, high 76. Clouds mixing in with sunny skies Monday, high 73. Possible showers and thunderstorms Tuesday, high 74. Next round weather from WMIX, Mount Vernon, Illinois. This is Chase Landers with Landers Collision Centers. Imagine this. You're driving down the road. It's dark as can be outside. Thank goodness you just had that left headlight bulb replaced. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see a thing. Now, close your eyes. Okay, don't close your eyes. You're supposed to be driving. Imagine noticing a slight twinkle off to the left, just above the ditch. What is that, you think to yourself? All of a sudden, whap! You've just encountered your first deer hit. The left side of your vehicle is beat up pretty bad. The next thing I want you to imagine is very simple. Picking up your phone and dialing one landers to set up your repair. Deer claims are common, and usually a very simple process, which fall under comprehensive coverage. This is Chase Landers asking you to allow Landers to be your collision repair shop of choice. Whether it be a deer hit, fender bender, or the regular, uh-oh, sorry mom, Landers is here for you whenever you need us. Big or small, 
Landers fixes them all. One triple eight Landers. That's one eight 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 Landers. Mount Vernon is home to many wonderful people and things, and that includes quality cardiac care from Dr. Ruzaik Ibrahim. A skilled cardiologist, Dr. Ibrahim's training and scientific accomplishments have earned his designation as a Fellow of the American College of Cardiology. His services range from preventative care to the treatment of advanced heart conditions. For an appointment with Dr. Ibrahim at Crossroads Specialty Clinic, call 241-9071 or visit in person at 4113 South Water Tower, Mount Vernon. And welcome back on the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX and WMIXSports.com. It's powered by Crossroads Community Hospitals, more than a hospital. It's what healthcare should be. That's Danny Zerwinski. I'm Chris Hugo. Jeff Crow is in studio with us as well this morning on a busy Saturday morning. We're talking some high school football. Of course, the Pinckneyville Panthers spoiled Nashville's homecoming last night. 53 to 46. Talking about it now with Panther head coach Todd Thomas. Coach, good morning. Good morning, guys. You know what? Any win is a great win, but when you go into your rival's homecoming game and you pick up a big win on the road like that, I think it has to feel a little sweeter. Yeah, it was a must win for us. We're setting at 3 and 3, and, uh, you know, we get Carterville next week and finish up with Dupo. Uh, we really felt like our backs were against the wall a little bit, and uh, it was a must win. And our kids, it wasn't pretty. Uh, Nashville's offense is a fair to stop, and obviously by looking at the score, it was an offensive game. Uh, I'm just proud that we got out of there with a win, and we, our kids just found a way to get the job done. A lot of times in life, that's that's what it boils down to. Last night, when you look at the box score, you see the points, you see the score, you see the yardage. Was it a case of getting in that ball game as a coach and a coaching staff with a lot of changing going on, or were you able to execute the plan you went into and just execute it out to be a high-scoring game? Uh, it just ended up being a high-scoring game. Uh, I kind of went off the cuff a little bit more last night. I usually had things uh, on paper and scripted a lot, and I just kind of went with my gut last night. Um, you know, we, we are polar opposites. Uh, our, our two football teams are polar opposites. You know, they're a big, strong, bruising team, ground and pound, and we're kind of more of a finesse team. Uh, you know, so we were able we were able to use our skill kids to our advantage, get on the perimeter, and cause them some problems, and they caused us some problems running the football. So it was just a, it was kind of a shootout, and like I said, our kids showed a lot of heart, a lot of character. Uh, we got down early and had a chance to just roll over, and when somebody's running the ball down your throat, you know, that's real easy to do. But our seniors weren't going to be denied that win, and I'm happy for them, and I'm proud for our kids. Last night, Coach, as you mentioned, a must win. Your team needed that win badly last night. As as the game went along and it was such back and forth, what, what was one thing you learned about your team last night? Well, you know, we had, we had some kids step up this week in practice. Um, we had some extremely tough practices this week. I thought uh, uh, we were getting a little lack of days going from the time we came into practice to, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. From the time the kids walked into the locker room, Time to the time they walked out of the locker room, I was kind of in their butts. And uh, it was not an easy week of practice, but I thought we developed a little bit of mental toughness this week. And, you know, it, it carried over. And, we, and, again, it was a must win. And we had some seniors, you know, they've got some goals. And uh, backs kind of against the wall, and they just did not want to come out of that game with a loss. So it, it was just kind of a battle of wills. And not taking anything away from Nashville, their kids played hard, and, and they just went flat right over us. But uh, we, our kids found a way to get the job done. As a coach uh, and the staff, and you get to this time of year, week seven's in the book for your team. You get bumps, you get bruises, you get hurts, pains, aches, injuries. Uh, what's the fine line for our listeners to find the fine line that coaches and coaching staff walk in trying to get on your team and get them going but not get on them too much because it's that time where everybody's kind of grinding down physically and mentally at this point? Yeah, it's it's tough, and it is it is a fine balance. And you know, I don't think any coach has it completely figured out. You know, a hundred percent. But you just have to go with your gut a lot of times and, and see what's going on in practice. Yeah, at this point in time, you can't go out and and beat each other up in practice. You know, everybody's got kids hurt. Everybody's got kids banged up. You know, our center's been out. You know, we're hoping to get him back. So. But sometimes you got to realize, hey, against a team like Nashville, you got to line up and, and you know, kind of 
do a little bit of scrimmage and he gets a feel for what they do offensively. So yeah, it's tough. It it is tough and it's a tough call sometimes, but but you know, Carterville this week, you know, it, it we'll just have to see. We came out pretty pretty good unscathed last night. Our trainer had a good report for us, so we just gotta move on and do the best we can this week. Moving on, you have Carterville at home. Obviously, everybody knows about them. You have a Dupo team that's gotten better as the season goes on. Key thing is you are at home. You are in control of your own destiny. How do you go about expressing that to your team, explaining all that that goes into the next couple of weeks? Well, you know, uh, you know, kids are, kids are intelligent. You know, they know Carterville has a good squad. You know, but we tell our kids we, we respect all, but we fear none, and, and I, you know, I have the utmost respect for them and their program and their coaching staff. I've known Coach Trust and their guys on their staff for a long time. They do a great job. They spend a lot of time preparing, and they've got a good scheme and good system. So, you know, it's going to be a battle. You know, we, we want to come in, and it's going to be tough for us, but we want to come in, and we're going to prepare to try to win the ball game and, and do the best we can. You know, they've kind of run over everybody, and they've got great athletes, and and, and, and they're good. They're they're the five, number five, four ranked team in three A for a reason. But at the same time, we you know we go in every game to try to win the game. So that's going to be our focus this week, and we're going to give them the, the, best, the best effort we can. Let the chips fall where they may, and you know we're the underdog, and we've got nothing to lose. And that's what I'm going to tell our kids. And and uh, you know, it is what it is. Last I do to finish up. So. But last question for you, because we know you've got a lot of things going on. But our last question, our social media question of the week is this. What is your biggest pet peeve? My biggest pet peeve. Boy, that's a tough one. Um, my biggest pet peeve. Yeah. Ooh. I know it's I a guess. Yeah. I, I don't really know at this point in time. <laughs> I'd hate to say. You hate to say. Okay. I'd hate to I'd hate to say I'd hate to I'd hate to narrow it down to one thing. Probably just ju- ju- probably just apathy. Okay. All right. Probably just apathy. Okay. There we go. And and uh, certainly something that's becoming an increasingly larger problem, uh, just in society in general. Coach, we appreciate yeah. the time for us this yeah. morning. Big win last night against the Hornets. Good luck to the Panthers the rest of the way. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your time. That's Todd Thomas, head coach of Pickneyville Panther football, and of course. Still plenty more talk coming your way. We'll talk with Sam Root. They have a big fundraiser, a fish fry, coming up there in the land of Blueford. Weber Trojans, it'll be a nice little benefit for them. We'll talk about that with Sam Root after the break here on the Saturday Sports Show, powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. Back after these. Here's Jeff Schmidt for Schmidt Chevrolet of Mount Vernon. We've got the all-new 2014 Chevy Silverado in. The new 5.3 generates 355 horsepower with 23 miles per gallon highway for the best fuel efficiency of any V8 pickup. It is a beautiful truck. We've got some LTZs in with the chrome wheels, chrome door handles, and it's really the best looking truck on the market right now. Schmidt Chevrolet of Mount Vernon, 3423 Broadway in Mount Vernon. If you can't pick us up where you live, move. Move. This is WMIX, Mount Vernon, Marion. Another Withers Broadcasting Station. When you hear the warm, inviting sound of a crackling fire, what comes to mind? A rustic campground? A cozy cabin? How about the new Good Samaritan Regional Health Center? Our new family lounges feature a lot of comforts you might not expect. Things like this. No, that's not a babbling brook or serene stream out in the countryside. It's a two-story waterfall located right here at Good Samaritan. And that's not the only way we're raising the bar for patient comfort. We've added lush healing gardens, as well as wall after wall of beautiful artwork, all designed to create the perfect healing atmosphere. And if all this sounds like music to your ears, we encourage you to check us out. Chances are, we're not too far from where you are right now. The new Good Samaritan Regional Health Center. Raising a hospital, raising the bar. High school sports are back, and your source for scores is WMIXSports.com. Also, find archived local sports broadcasts, video highlights, national sports headlines, and more right at your fingertips. Listen and watch live WMIX sports broadcasts from your desktop or any mobile device. Need a score? Want to see a sick dunk? Miss a game? Didn't get up in time for the Saturday sports show? That's right. It's all at WMIXSports.com. Another free service from Winners Broadcasting. WMIXSports.com. Welcome back.
back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX and WMIXSports.com. It's all powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Indeed it is. Big things going on in blue for tonight. It's a fish fry for Weber Township High School. We welcome the athletic director of Weber, Sam Root. Coach, good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Doing pretty good. A fish fry. That's always something fantabulous in my book. Great fish, usually some chicken strips as well. What do we have going on tonight in Blueford? Uh, right now we got a men's softball tournament going on. we got 10 teams coming out today. Nice. Actually, our first team was at 8 o'clock, so uh, we're on game number two right now. And uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that'll that's be going on all day. We're hope, Looks like we're getting a cell of rain in, so we might be swapping the tarp on here in a minute. But uh, besides that, we have Country Roads out of Effingham, Illinois, coming down for an all-you-can-eat fish fry from 4 to 7 p.m. in the high school gym. And uh, all-you-can-eat uh, fish, chicken strips, popcorn shrimp, and uh, all the sides and fixings, too, for $9, uh, $6.00. It's 12 and under. Great way for Weber, of course, a lot of communities and schools looking Hello? for ways to raise money. This has got to be a great way to help your team out. First thing i got to ask. Hello? How d- Hello? Of course, we may, may be in the process of losing Sam Root here on the Saturday Sports. We'll try to reconnect with him and, and get that figured out. Not sure. Could be. Not sure. I've usually not had good luck with cell signal on the, on the eastern part of the county there, so we'll figure out what's going on, but... All in all, who knows? It's Saturday Sports Show on WMIX and WMIXSports.com. But a big fish fry going on tonight, of course, in Blueford. It's a Country Roads fish fry from 4 to 7. Uh, usually that means it's an all-you-can-eat fish fry. And, of course, they will also usually have chicken strips because the common thing is, well, what if I don't like fish? Well, if you don't like fish, they usually have chicken strips or a chicken-type item for you as well. But you heard it, of course, a, a softball tournament going on all day out there. Of course, there is rain in the forecast, but that's oh, not going to dampen their spirits no. whatsoever. Can't rain. There's a golf scramble at Green Hills today, too. Can't rain. Can't, but I have a feeling they'll work around it if it does. Uh, the radar does not look very pretty at all yeah. for a while. So there's some events. If you got outside event over the next two or three hours and you're in this, this neck of the woods, it's going to be trouble. We're we looking at a possible delay in the Cardinal game, maybe? Possible. I'd welcome that. Not, you know. So I can get there. TV yeah. wouldn't. Oh. Hello? <laughs> no doubt about Hello? that. Coach, we welcome you back to the program. Of course, we were talking about the, the fish fry you have, of course, coming up uh, tonight, 4 to 7, Country Roads Fish Fry. All, all you can eat, I believe, I understand it. All you can eat? Yeah, all you can eat from 4 to 7 at the high school gym. They got uh, We have fish, chicken strips, uh, popcorn shrimp, steak fries, all the sides of the drink. Uh, $9 for adults and $6 for children 12 and under. We also have carryout available. Also mentioned that you were raising money, obviously, to help your sports programs out. Talk about your fall baseball season for the Weber Township Trojans. Uh, we finished nine and six on the year. We dropped two um, at the end of the year. We had a pretty loaded schedule since our spring moved to the uh, since our conference moved to the spring. Uh, you know, we tried to play anybody from anywhere. I think more than half of our schedule um, won a regional or went on, you know, went above. So uh, I'll tell you what, we had some kids step up. You know, with some seniors graduating last year. Uh, we had some good talent on the bench, and uh, they stepped up uh, a little more than I thought they would maybe early. And uh, we were pleased with our fall. You know, I said going in, uh, if we were around 500 uh, with our quality of our schedule, I thought it would equate to having a good chance of 20 wins and, you know, being right there and competing for a regional. So uh, it was, you know, good experience and uh, going into the spring. Back to your softball tournament, is it fast pitch or slow pitch going on out there today? I'll tell you what, it's slow pitch. If it's fast pitch, I don't, I don't, I don't think I have enough cards to wheel people off. So we're, we're going to stick with slow pitch. And we got 10 teams coming out, and actually we start at 8 o'clock, and it's going on currently. Not bad. Of course, let's run down the, the fundraiser information for tonight again with the fish fry. Still plenty of time, obviously, for people to make their plans and get to Blueford and, and support the fish fry for Weber Township High School. Is it at the grade school or is it at the high school tonight? It's in the high school gym. High school gym from 4 to 7 p.m. And he said that's all you can eat, and I, I like the menu there. Not only do you have all you can eat fish, but you have chicken strips, popcorn strip, and I, I believe I caught a steak fry reference. Is that true? Yeah, steak fries, uh, baked beans, coleslaw, uh, drink included. So uh, you know, cheaper than going to fast food. All you can eat. You know, hope to see. Uh, we already sold. Uh, we pre-sold over 400 tickets. Uh, I'm sure uh, you know with the main people we have at this tournament, several of them will be hungry and uh, going up. And uh, we welcome anybody to come out and help us out. Uh, and then we're, uh, we'll start redoing our field tomorrow, actually. Nice. Getting to it. Getting right to work. But, of course, that's $9, I believe, for adults and 6 you said, for children? Children 12 and under, $6. There you go. That's a great value tonight, 4 to 7 at the pit at Weber Township High School. Coach, we appreciate you for taking the time to join us this morning. But before we let you go, obviously, the WMIX Sports Social Media Question of the Week. And this week we want to know, what is your pet peeve? 
being late. You either should be on time, or if you're not going to be on time, be early. Well, exactly, because being on time is late. Vince Lombardi time, baby, 15 minutes before, but yes. <laughs> that, and, uh, that and if someone doesn't look you in the eye when you're talking to them. Oh. Eye contact is very important. And of course, uh, this fundraiser tonight is important as well for Weber Township High School. We wish the Trojans the best of luck with the fundraiser tonight. Hey, thanks a lot, and I appreciate you having me on. Always a pleasure. Sam Root, of course, the athletic director at Weber High School, also the baseball coach. And uh, Trina has done very good things to that baseball oh, field out there. Very good things. Very good things for that program. Starting to turn it around, and a team that, you know, a couple games over 500 this past this fall. That's big because the amount of talent they lost last spring on a sectional qualifier was amazing for Weber. Yeah, and had a good season. I actually got to see the park, got to see the team uh, against the Harrisburg Bulldogs last year on a Friday afternoon, sat in with the good friend Jeffrey Drake on Sister Station, the BBQ, uh, out of Harrisburg. So uh, just amazing. I, I was very impressed once I arrived to see all the work that they put in and, of course, not done. And a big fundraiser tonight, 4 to 7 at the pit, $9 for adults, 12 and under. If you're a child, of course, it only costs you $6. Probably only costs your parents 6 bucks, But, you know, regardless of who pays for it, it's still a great value and a great deal for all you can eat. They abbreviate that A-Y-C-E, I've come to understand now. Now I finally know what that means on signs. But uh, all you can eat, fish, chicken strips, popcorn, shrimp, steak fries, and all the fixings and a drink. Uh, pretty good value. So get out there and support that tonight at Weber High School. How am I on breaks? I believe I have another break I can burn here on the Saturday Sports Show. It'll be our final break. We'll come back. We'll be long-winded because we're going to give you our answers to the WMIX Sports Social Media question, and then we will talk some high school football. Of course, good luck this week in the South Southern Conference invite today, or South Southern Conference tournament, I should say. Lady Rams tennis has had a successful season. Uh, just two losses on the year, a 5-4 loss to Centralia and a 7-2 loss to Mount Carmel. That was this week. Otherwise, they pretty well swept everybody uh, along the way. So good luck to Lady Rams tennis today. Also a running invitation, I believe, Centralia. today. Centralia. Golf so sectional at Salem. Things will be hopping in the Queen City today. Yep. And in Marion County with the golf sectional at Salem. So... Big things going on, of course. If you missed our Rams report last night, we're working on getting the archive for Rams football up from last night's game. We'll take that break. Saturday Sports Show powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Hi, this is Joe David Cummins, president of Community First Bank. By now you have heard about our new One Checking product. The new One account is a high-interest earning, free checking account designed for everyone. Unlike other banks that pay interest on higher balance, this account pays interest on all balances. From high schoolers to Warren Buffett, one will work for you. You can talk to one of us at 244-3000 and learn about the details. One, exclusively at Community First Bank. You will be one happy customer, member FDIC. Once upon a time, it was nearly impossible to find that perfect blend of luxury and fuel economy. Hi, Roy Schmidt, Chrysler dealer at King City Chrysler Center, Mount Vernon. The 2013 Chrysler 200 sedan provides luxurious options like leather, heated seats, and navigation without the frequent stops at the pump. You will find Uconnect technology that allows for hands-free use of your cell phone, keeping you legal while you talk. The Chrysler 200 doesn't just combine safety with luxury, it keeps you out of trouble. With 0% financing or a total of $3,500 in incentives on the 2013 Chrysler 200, we are guaranteed to find a payment perfect for you. Come see one of our associates at King City Chrysler, 1603 Broadway in Mount Vernon, or shop us online at kingcitychrysler.com. And don't forget our new express lane, fast oil changes and more for service without an appointment. Mount Vernon is home to many wonderful people and things, and that includes quality cardiac care from Dr. Ruzaik Ibrahim. A skilled cardiologist, Dr. Ibrahim's training and scientific accomplishments have earned his designation as a Fellow of the American College of Cardiology. His services range from preventative care to the treatment of advanced heart conditions. For an appointment with Dr. Ibrahim at Crossroads Specialty Clinic, call 241-9071 or visit in person at 4113 South Water Tower, Mount Vernon.
And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX, Mount Vernon, a free service from Weathers Broadcasting. Saturday Sports Show proudly sponsored by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Glad to have them along. And, of course, Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwinski. Jeff Crow is with us as well. Of course, WMIX Sports social media question is on Facebook. It's live at facebook.com slash WMIX Sports. We want to know, what is your pet peeve? Do you see what's your pet peeve? The the one or two or three or four you're going to use today, not not all of them, because we discuss our pet peeves all the time. Right, there's there's millions, and you know me, mine change by the minute. Uh, one thing I well, two things, lack of neatness. As long right. as you're organized and you have your stacks and or neatness, or you know that's fine. But if you have stuff piled and you don't slop things around and you don't take care of things and. You don't take care of equipment, and you don't do those little things like that. That drives me crazy. Neatness, and then learn self helplessness. Self helplessness, where it's not something someone knows, but they learn how to do things to make it easier for because. themselves and not do as much. Learn self helplessness. So, in other words, my desk probably drives you nuts, but you must admire. No, the because way. it's or- if it's organized, I don't care. It's not organized. It's a mess. But, a I, mess. but I, I know where everything. But desk. I know where everything is. Right. So is that organized? I. I it's got to be neat. In a place, in a, and as long as I mean, if you have multiple stacks on your desk and it's in stacks and it's neat or round, that's fine. But if it's just everywhere, that that doesn't count. But you probably do appreciate how I take care of our equipment, and how I have a system. Right. So there we go. Fifty. 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 Uh, no, my desk is a mess, but I do know where everything is, and it's it does drive me insane. Like, I have to sit there and take deep breaths every so often. And you think, well, why don't you do something about it? But there just aren't enough hours in the day, sadly. Um, pet peeves for me. Um, one, people using our front lawn as if it's a sidewalk. Um, I mean that here at the station. I did not recognize that there was a sidewalk just outside of our window. There is not. Please stop riding your bicycle by it. Please stop walking by it. That's just my personal pet peeve right now. Just right out in front. But I'm good. That's just because I got, just got scared to death. But I'm good now. I'll be fine in a couple minutes. But actually, in all sincere, sincerity, that's not my pet peeve. I'm just kidding. Okay. Uh, my, my pet peeve is actually a sense of self-entitlement. I'm um, feeling as if things are, are owed to you. Um, often, this is because maybe a sense of who you are or because of maybe p- parents... Or growing up in an environment where things have been handed off or things have been or you've been made to feel as if maybe you're better than what you actually are because really um, nobody's better than anybody else. And so really you should have to work to get where you are. And I think I mean, we're all guilty of that at at some point. And I hope that I I am. I feel like at times maybe I've become a little bit like that at times, but I've just experienced that a lot lately Um in all kinds of settings. So senses of entitlement bother me, which brings me, as I say, senses of entitlement, um, not being able to properly pluralize like positions, like saying attorney generals instead of attorneys general. Uh, or sec- Mills. Yes, that too. Or, you know, secretaries of state. Instead, you know, people would say like secretary of states. You know, just that. The apostrophe, the unnecessary apostrophe in plural things. Like putting the apostrophe S when that's not a case. It's You're not showing a case of possession. You're plural. You're just making it plural. You don't need that apostrophe. Those are just little things that just drive me absolutely bonkers. And I'm totally kidding about the sidewalk thing. I just literally was scared to death a moment ago by somebody riding their bicycle by. So I'm still trying to recover from that. A little bit of a shock. It's like, oh, hey, there's a guy on a bicycle. How you doing? Oh, I got, you know. Looked in here, too. You also have. Me. <laughs> this is mine. Still freaked out. When you're on the golf course and you have a group of people in front of you that are slow and don't let people play through or don't have a clue what to do and you're holding other golfers up, that's that's another one on the list. Not that replacing. Non, non-etiquette. I don't care about replacing divots or whatever. I don't care. I'm not, mine's not golf related. Because that's, not going. that's the whole done. thing. Not replacing the toilet paper in the bathroom. Leaving it empty. Not flushing. Ooh. No yellow, is, let it mellow I'm rule around sorry, here. I'm sorry, but that is, that is right up there with Coach McCurran about you know wa- not washing hands and stuff. They're, you know, do your thing, flush, wash your hands. That's three things you do in the bathroom, and a lot of people don't do but one of those. And that dry, I'm like Coach McCurran, that drives me nuts when that washing hands doesn't get done. 
I posted one of mine. The other one I have is people who hog conversations. No matter if you're right in the middle of your sentence and somebody jumps in the middle of it because they feel that what you have to say is more important than somebody else, yeah, people who hog the conversation. Wouldn't know anybody like that. As a finger gets pointed right at me. I am just I am horrible about recognizing when people are pausing. And this this happens all the time to me just because I take a long pause, what is perceived as a long pause to me, as ADD as I am, as, oh, well, they're done talking, so it's okay to talk now. And uh, then they go on. It's like, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. So, yeah. But anyhow, high school football coming up. There's a squirrel outside as well. Week 8 should be interesting as the six-team conferences will close out. Of course, their conference schedule. The Mountford and Rams will travel to Centralia. We'll have that game for you. Audio only at WMIXSports.com. 6.30 will be your pregame. 7 o'clock will be your kickoff. Uh, as things will get interesting in the South 7 Conference next week, of course, we take a look at things here. We posted it on Twitter about that if Cahokia should happen to get a win next week against Altoff, we'll have a very tough game against normal u right in Week 9. We're not projecting that Kahoki is going to win next week and then lose week nine. But if they do, they would be South Seven Conference champions. Of course, there's no head-to-head, but you would have to assume that the conference would designate Kahoki as a representative with Marion probably going to get into the playoffs. It's just a case where Kahoki would go into the postseason at four and five. Yeah. So yeah. there you go, if they win the conference. First time since 08, a team would be four and five getting in Carlinville as the last and in the season four and six. That's again the Altoff and Kokia games game of the week next week. I mean, obviously South Seven. They're all three very good games, rivalry week and week and week eight of the South Seven. But you know, if Kokia could win at home, and it's very likely, because if they play like they did last night, it's very likely that they could be conference champs, go four and five, get in, then of course Marion could get in because they could they'll, they'll get in with the win. You have I think Carbondale will get in at five and four, possibility of getting with the points. If Mount Vernon can get a win, they would get another one. Centralia get a win week nine, they could get in. You could almost have four or five teams out of the South Seven if everything breaks right. If. Then you look down the list, River to River Conference, Benton at Murfreesboro, very intriguing game. If Spike Bunton's healthy, Benton's got a shot. If Spike is day-to-day, minute-to-minute, quarter-to-quarter, I don't know if, you know, when Murphy played Harrisburg like they did last night, you know, you know, Benton should be the favorite. Murphy's at home. Murphy's looking at it going, if we beat Benton and we beat Ducoin, they're going to be favored in those two games possibly. Murphy could be 5-4. and four. They're playing for the playoffs. I think Heron will beat Harrisburg easy. Massac and West Frankfurt to battle the pride. You know, get a win. Frankfurt's looking for a win. And, oh, they're 0-7. A.J. at Sparta. The Wildcats are in for the 14th straight year in a row. Brett Dietering and company. Carterville, Pinckneyville. Pinckneyville needs to beat Carterville and Dupo at home. That's going to be two incredibly tough tasks. And then Nashville Ducoin in another game that's just for pride. Yeah, exactly. And you take a look at the Diamond now going back alphabetically, as my computer has failed me this morning. I apologize. Chester at El Dorado. All the marbles on the table in Saline County next Friday night. That's a big one. Chester has won umpteen different BDC games in a row. Fairfield at Johnston City is looking, you know, Fairfield needs a win, obviously favored. They need El Dorado to beat Chester so they can somehow get into that mix. And then Hamilton County at Elvarado Trico. 22 losses in a row or 21 for Hamilton County. There's their shot. The last time they won a game was against Elvarado Trico. And then Cesar Valera Waltonville Woodlawn goes to the beautiful field at Carmi to play in a game that Carmi needs to win to keep their hopes going. And then Vina Goreville at CZR, big playoff game next Saturday afternoon at Span Field and Christopher on homecoming. Big week, obviously week eight, winding down. Of course, a quick glimpse of the Cahokia Conference. You have Breeze Central at, at taking the short drive to Westland over there in Trenton. Columbia is at Redbud, Freeburg at Dupo, and obviously – you know, the first team, the road team, probably the favorite in each of those games. You know, yeah. Westland, of course, now with Rick Johns as head coach, making some strides. Tim Nelson's at Dupo now making strides. Um, you know, three years ago, maybe Columbia Redbud game of the week. Quality, of course, all, of, across all conferences. Certainly will not have that billing in week eight of 2013, but I think you have to pick the road team there as your favorite. Um, alphabetically, of course, by HSA conference as far as scores that we would have on WMIXSports.com. In the Central State 8, Rochester is at Lincoln. 
I think you can look at that one as a playoff point possibly for the Rams. Lincoln, of course, uh, has struggled historically. Uh, Landfear is at Taylorville. That could actually be a pretty com- fairly competitive game. SHG is at Glenwood. You want to you want it. You feel it looks competitive on paper, though. You know SHG will be the heavy favorite in that one just because they're SA- by name. Uh, Southeast is at Springfield High, so that should be another good one in a CSA, at least by my perspective. But you assume that you're probably going to get two more playoff points out of Rochester. You you will, you know. I mean, um, just a matter of time. Obviously, um, when you look at Week Nine, Altoff is at Triad. That hurt. You're going to guarantee one there. Mascoot at Centralia. You guaranteed one there. Rochester's going to give you one. You know. Plus, um, you know, Carbondale should beat Harrisburg. That should be another one. Who else are we missing? Is that it? One, two, three, four, five. Triad, That's it. Triad, yeah. Triad, Altoff, That's yeah. Six. Because if you got Mount, enough points, if Mount Carmel get a wins, win. hope, get a hope win. if Mount Carmel should win, you hope you have your fifth win. That would be a playoff point. Obviously, you want to beat Mount Carmel, but uh, the Aces are on a nice little roll right now. Big Eight, of course, uh, gets some kind of gets some attention here in this part of the state. The Big Eight Conference out of Indiana, of course, the Aces will be at home against on Senior Night against Boonville, Indiana. That should be a very very winnable game. Boonville, by comparison. Um, typically, maybe like an earlier Millennium Centralia type right. program. Uh, just they yep. struggle, and so you look at Boonville going into Mount Carmel at the Snake Pit should be a win for the Aces, which would put them at eight zero. I think Mount Carmel be eight zero coming in here, and this so. group is you know in the lore of Mount Carmel football and the frozen tundra and <laughs> that county, Mount Carmel has a pretty good group to go off the NFL Films thing. But uh, if Mount Carmel's three A. And I, you know, there'll be a three A, four A line draw. Usually three A, you know, you got to be thinking them Carterville and Greenville are gonna eventually have to hash this thing out. Greenville probably go undefeated. Carterville will go undefeated. Mount Carmel could go eight and one, nine and zero oh. if they go three A. It's you know, the Golden Aces and the Comets and the Lions. That could be an interesting bracket if all three of those get in there and you got nine and zero, oh, nine and zero, oh, eight and one, or nine and zero. Oh, so a week. S- Week 8 matchup that intrigues me. I had to count real quick. Uh, Mark Grounds and the Jacksonville Crimson will travel to modern day. Yeah. Um, so that, that could be I'd an like interesting be modern game. Day, right? Piecing together a nine-game football schedule. <laughs> they do, hey, good, you they got do well central. at it outside yeah, of Live, for, live for Life. You got to do what you got to do. I mean, that, that is a classic do what you got to do. I mean, they took on all comers. They they took upon Mount Carmel, of course. They both had yeah. an awkward awkward bye week in, in, for Mount Carmel's case, conference play. But um, other than that, <sighs> Let's see. I think they're doing a maybe a crossover thing that I see in the little Illini yeah. next like week. week. Nine, they have, maybe eight, nine, they have something going on, maybe. So you take kind of a look at that. Two weeks from the day, we get pairings. Two weeks from the night, it's hard to believe. I mean, it. If you know, their team's starting to look at two weeks, going, eh, time to get the basketballs out, and wrestling mats out. I mean, you know, and uh, you know, three Morgan in last night. Fairfield Eldorado and AJ join the mix. And, you know, Ducoin goes by the wayside, shock. I mean, there's a lot of teams down here over the next couple of weeks that still have a shot to get in. It's hard to believe how many teams have that. Now, whether that's great football or whether that's mediocrity everywhere, that could be the, that could be the point of discussion. Oh, and exactly. We're going to find out a lot over this coming week. And, you know, quickly, the Southwestern Conference, Alton at Collinsville. Alton probably the easy favorite in that one. Uh, Granite City travels to Edwardsville. Edwardsville is going to be the favorite there. O'Fallon will probably be the, even though they were thumped by Edwardsville last night, will be the favorite at East, Belleville East. And then you have Belleville West at East Side on Saturday. And that could probably be the game of the week across all levels of football here yeah. in the 618 area code. Probably. You know, just on the periphery, but boy, that Southwestern Conference, eh? They had to the Clyde. Got to get after it and got to get us a home Friday night game, that's for sure. Two weeks from yesterday, three weeks. I think we'll take it. Oh, yeah. Take whatever we can get. Of course, the football season is winding down, and that is probably, it, it's just hard to believe that we are 77.7% through uh, the high school. I, there's not going to be a lot of choices of home games around the area when the high school football playoffs start. Usually you get a chance to go maybe a Friday night, a Saturday afternoon, then the next week you get a Saturday afternoon and things of that nature. I mean, you're not going to have a lot of choices. A lot of teams going to be on the move early in Southern Illinois down here, except with the exceptions, obviously, of Carterville. 
at Mount Carmel, Greenville, they'll be at home. But, you know, depending on how they line these things up, and usually they go together by quadrants, obviously, that there could be very few choices of high school playoff football games unless somebody gets on a roll like a Harrisburg gets to the semis. Well, and what you have now is you have the possibilities of, of things really being jumbled because if you're one that relies on the IHSA playoff outlook, uh, you're looking at a case where, you know, if, if – a Mount Vernon doesn't get to their their five. That's going to affect things over after week eight, especially. You're going to start seeing things just kind of start to to fall into place with some of these teams that are not going to get in. And you know, it's a must win. I hate to label it that. The Rams need to win at Centralia. You don't want to have to possibly look to Mount Carmel for win number five, just because you don't want to put that pressure on yourself. Now for win number six, yes, you you would love uh, to put, have that pressure for win number six, knowing with the comfort of knowing that you're in the postseason. But you know you you've got to win on the road, and and we'll see how things work up at Evers Field next week. Six thirty, your pregame, seven o'clock, your kickoff, right here on WMIX. But you know I am intrigued by Marion Carbondale. We we've seen what we thought we would see out of Carbondale over the course of the conference season. I'm not Denny Green on you, but. You know, that's the starting off hot and then coming into conference yeah. play and then and, and then kind of cooling off a little bit. But what intrigues me the most, and I mean, no disrespect to Nick Hiller, the Carbondale Terriers, I am intrigued at how they managed to get past Cahokia, a team that we have seen more and more tough defense out of and stingy defense. And, and though they allowed, you know, I think it was a testament to Jared Chainer's offense last night to score 33 points, but uh, it's a Cahokia team that's really tightened up defensively over the past few years, and I'm just kind of mesmerized by some of the games we have seen in conference play, and, and I like those two other games in the conference yeah. next week, too. And we've always talked about it. Carbondale always manages to get out of the gate early. You know, you have Murphy, Ohio Division, you have Heron, Ohio Division, you have Waterloo, who last year made the playoffs, but... You know, barely made it, and that's usually two and one, three and zero oh start, and then they have to play Centralia, and they got beat. You know, and then you throw in Cahokia, they won at home in a tight game. Now they, you know, go to Mount Vernon, get beat close game. Go to Althoff, get beat close game. They're competing. They're right in the middle of everything. I mean, they've only lost by twelve points the last two weeks, but the fact remains is they get in this set. And you know they're talking about it. You know they're thinking about it. Okay, when we get this point in the year, we start wobbling. Now they're four and three. You know they do host Marion, but boy, Marion's playing really well right now. What a job by Kerry Martin, his staff. And then they got Harrisburg. So you figure Carbondale's going to win Week Nine and get their fifth win as a favorite. The question will be if you want to be comfortable two weeks from the night, get those two wins. If not, you're going to be sitting there counting your points and hoping and doing all kinds of things when the bubble teams come out about five o'clock. No doubt about the head, and of course we'll we'll keep you up to date on the Twitterverse. Give us a follow at WMIX Sports and on Facebook. We'll we'll kind of take you home over the course of the playoff pairing tonight. Um, it's just it's still somewhat of a shock that the fall sports season is all, is pretty well coming to a close. You have boys golf, girls yeah. golf, both both in the sectional mm-hmm. round of the postseason. You have I'll soccer play. heading into postseason not this week but next week. You have tennis getting ready to go to the postseason. You have volleyball going to be in the postseason Halloween week, huh? so not this week or next week, but the week after. Lady Rams are a two seed, and the Frankfurt Regional will play at 7 o'clock on October 29th against Centralia for the third time. Here's another one. Junior high baseball and softball wrapped up this week, yesterday, or today. Basketball games are scheduled starting this coming week. In high school, you got a big junior high shootout at Blueford next week for JVs. So you've got that going on. In fact, I know that the names of teams and cheerleaders for the program at the Rome tournament was due yesterday. So the Rome tournament's right around the corner as well in a couple of weeks. So Unbe- I mean, unbelievable. Round balls, basketballs. There are basketball games scheduled next week. I do know that for a fact, junior high wise. If you think of it that way. Of course, taking a look quickly at the Southern Illinois Junior High School Athletic Association Baseball and Softball State Finals. We're going to name the, the teams that won trophies. Class S Baseball yesterday. Blueford beat Steelville 9-7 to to win third place. It was Valmeyer over Altamont Lutheran 7-1 to in the championship. So Valmeyer, Class S Baseball champions. In Class M, North Clay took third place 1-0 over Redbud. Goreville beat Nashville in the championship game 9-4. to of course, talent continues to come up in, in Goreville. Uh, you take a look. Marion wins uh, their second straight championship in Class L, 6-3 to three over Westland. Carmi beat Waterloo for third place, 9-3. to three. Taking a look at softball now in Class S, Pinckneyville 204 
dropped uh, a tough one to Aviston, 10 nothing in five innings in the third place game yesterday. Uh, DeSoto beat Steelville 5-1 to one in the championship game. Class M on Thursday, of course. Class M and L finished up on Thursday. Class S yesterday on both sides. Uh, looks like in Class M, of course, it was on WMIXSports.com, but Redbud beat Hardin County for third place, 6-1. to one. Pinckneyville beats Smithton 4-3 to three in the championship game of Class M. In Class L, Carmi defeated Millstadt 9-4 to four in the third place game. Of course, Carmi on both sides of the gender baseball and softball made it. And then Johnston City took home the Class L title 7-4, to four, pardon me, over Highland. Of course, this all wrapped up this week, and you take a look, and really it's it's kind of become a case where you're not surprised to see your Nashvilles, your Pinckneyvilles, your Johnston Cities, your Carmi's, your Carterville's um, really have, have been dominating things over the past few years. The Altamont team, they've had a run here in the last two or three years. Baseball Altamont kind of And then you look at North Clay getting a little run also. So th- there's a couple of teams right there that – Obviously, we see on the high school level that we'll have some talent coming in. That doesn't always mean it's going to happen, but we'll have some talent coming in based on those runs. Exactly. And obviously, you can't, you can't assume that because you're successful at, at this junior high level, that's obviously going to translate into some success. But once you mix those kids in, you know, as long as the improvement continues, and you can start to hope for some of that success to kind of rebound at the high school level. So you take a look at Blueford. And, you know, the Trojans, as they go into Weber Township High School over the coming years, you start to hope for, for some success at the high school level. Well, you, you think, again, as we said, success in the junior high ranks doesn't normally, you know, isn't, it got guaranteed in the high school ranks. There's so many factors. You know, people, kids find other things to do. They have jobs. They have other interests. They get burnt out. They transfer. They move, whatever the case may be. So, you know, but again, congratulations to Blueford, another state trophy and a sport coming back to Jefferson County. That feels good. We congratulate them on an outstanding fall baseball season at junior high at Blueford. No doubt about that. And, of course, we congratulate all teams, of course, in the Southern Illinois Junior High School Athletic Association State Finals in baseball and softball this year. And congratulate everybody. We we would try to promote all the teams in our coverage area, but you take a look at the Southern Illinois Junior High School Athletic Association, and every single team is in the, pretty well in the WMIXAM daytime coverage area. So there you go. Congratulations to all teams. Uh, we have a couple minutes left in the program. We'll tell you promote our broadcast schedule for this coming week, of course. We will tell you that Friday night the Mount Vernon Rams will head to Centralia. Football on WMIX 940 on Friday night. No video at WMIXSports.com, of course, but we'll be back with video Tuesday night. This Tuesday night when the Lady Rams travel to Marion in volleyball action. We'll be on the air probably around 720, 730 with high school volleyball for you. WMIX 940 and, of course, online at WMIXSports.com. Dot com. So that's next week's coverage. Of course, our schedule is online at WMIXSports.com. That includes the St. Louis Rams schedule as well as the St. Louis Cardinals and LCS schedule. Cardinals 307 today on WMIXFM. 232 is your pregame, of course, on 94.1. St. Louis Rams, of course, are back at it tomorrow, I believe. Trying to think. I think it's the Texans at noon. So Texas at noon on AM 940 as the St. Louis Rams uh, have Houston. We'll see how that defense does. We'll see if the running game get off the ground for the Texans with a combination of Foster and Ben Tate. We will certainly, for my sake, hope that they do, but also hope for a Rams victory. This is WMIX Mount Vernon, a free service from Weathers Broadcasting. Thank you for joining us today for the Saturday Sports Show. We'll do it again next week after the 8 o'clock news right here on 940, online at WMIXSports.com, NBC News Now.